Okay, how about this one? A group of loonies go out on a day trip, and on the way back, they stop at a pub for a drink. I think that's enough, Campbell, eh? One of the loonies comes running up to the nurse saying, Nurse, nurse, that barmaid smiled at me. So the nurse says, well, smile back. So the loonie goes away, but he's back five minutes later saying, Nurse, nurse, that barmaid winked at me. So the nurse says, well, went back. So he's away again, but he's back ten minutes later saying, Nurse, nurse, that barmaid. She showed me her bosoms. So the nurse says, well, show her your nuts. So he's away again, straight up to the barmaid and goes, do you not get it? <laughs> the nurse says, show her your nuts, and he does! <laughs> Holy <laughs> Campbell. Have they found my kittens yet? Francine, I told you. They were sick. All the leaves are brown. Thanks for the lift. She'll be all right, you know. The wee girl's tougher than you think. Maybe. I listened to your show on Sunday night, by the way. I thought you and Campbell were wondrous. Are you going to be famous now? I don't think so. Why not? I don't know. I think we've blown it. The producer left before the show was over and maybe has been in touch since. Caretaker let me in. Tell him I was your man. Caretaker would have let you in if you told him you was the Yorkshire Ripper. So, this is where you're living now? Aye. It's not much, but... No much? Men do intend to life live better than this. What did you come here for? I want you to come home. I want you to just take the drugs that we agreed, eh? I can't do that. Oh, no. I'm not going to take any more of this crap, Paula. You're not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. What am I supposed to tell folks when they ask after you? That you're living in a whore's drug den, tripping your syringes in the stairs, and using your industrial strength dental to cover up the smell of stale spunk and dog shit. It's nice to know you worry about me. You can't stay here, Rosalie. I know. I'm going to Hillcrest. In a leafy suburban setting, close to shops and transport. You can help me move in if you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Griffin. Oh, well, McKenna! And how's my top salesman this afternoon, eh? Oh, I'm... I'm still just learning, sir. Uh, you're going to be my right-hand man from now on, McKenna. The district council scheme starts work next week. There's plenty more where that came from. Money in the bank, McKenna. Money in the bank. Uh, I, was, I was wondering uh, just when the uh, district council commission would actually be in the bank. I know what it's like, McKenna. You want to get out there and buy that red sports car, eh? That Nikon stereo, big screen telly and video system? Is that true or am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, 
My grandmother is emigrating. She needs three thousand pounds. McKenna, I'm going to tell you something I've never told any other salesman in this company. I was married once. Are you married? No, sir. Then take my advice. Don't ever get married. The biggest liability a salesman can have is a wife. They suck the life out of you. Margaret was always on about me not spending enough time at home. She said, Gordon, my name's Gordon, but don't ever call me that. No, sir. She said, Gordon, there's a parent-teacher meeting. And I said, I have to sell windows. She said, your son's been fighting. And I said, I've got to sell windows. She says, your daughter's on drugs. And I said, I have to sell windows. And when she finally up and left, do you know what I said to myself? I've got to sell windows. <laughs> I said, good riddance to bad rubbish. Because she was trying to drag me down, McKenna, just as sure as if she was working for the competition, which I suspected she might have been when I thought about it since she spent longer than I thought decent talking to an Everglades rep at a double glazing convention once. I'm speaking to you as a father to his son. Don't ever let personal concerns drag you down. If you must, then let them pull you up to be the best salesman you can be. You want to help your grandmother go out and sell windows. You want quick money. Sell domestic installations. So what are you going to do? I'm going to sell windows. I can't hear you. I'm going to sell windows. That doesn't sound like my right-hand man. I'm going to sell windows! That's my boy! Everywhere I go. Good afternoon. I'm Edward McKenna from Windy Windows. We've been left with a stuff here cancelled order and can do you a really good deal. And we offer them absolutely free, except for the cost of materials, in return for putting up a discreet windows by twin view sign in the front of your home. We've been looking for properties to use as show houses in the area. I can really help but notice what a lovely garden you've got. I'm afraid I'm only authorised to offer this discount tonight, and tonight only. Well, only fed it once. And you'll never regret, 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 don't forget to tune in tomorrow night for Campbell Bain's Looney Tunes show. Eddie, where the hell have you been? Sorry, I'm late. Late? You've missed the whole bloody show. I've been working. Don't have to catch every one of your shows from start to finish, do I? It was your show. It was? Look, I'm sorry. I had a few babies, didn't want to drive. <laughs> a couple of babies? You look like you've been on a three-day binge. Look, Campbell, I'm a salesman. That's what I get paid for. I don't get paid for coming here. Well, I don't think that's a very professional attitude. What do I need a professional attitude for? For when you go to lunch with Paula Kinghorn. She's been trying to get in touch with you for days. Jesus. Lunch! Eddie, lunch! And then she said, I probably shouldn't be saying this yet, but I think I'm going to have good news for you. I can't. You go, Campbell. She specifically said she wanted to have lunch with you. I can't do it. How not? I've been waiting for this all my life. If I went to lunch and came out with nothing, I don't know what I'd do. You'll not come out with nothing. I Just make sure she pays for lunch. Lunch? Hang on, we must have passed it. Are you sure? No, you're right. It's further up the hill. What are you doing these anyway? Eh? Oh, that one's got my clothes and household effects, and that one's got my debt hole. No. I'm sure this isn't right. We should have crossed a big road by now. I'm going to have to ask somebody. Can't you just chop any door you see? Sorry to bother you, but I'm new to the neighbourhood. Do you know where Hillcrest is? Going to have a look for yourself, then? Aye. It's just up the road on your right. And you'll positively right weep when you see it. First lot are supposed to be moving in any day now. Dr Brown's holding a community meeting on Friday, if you'd like to come along. Aye, so I would. 
I'll pop him some leaflets if you like. What's your address? Number five, Hillcrest. My name's Rosalie, by the way. Nice to meet a neighbour so soon. Rosalie, listen, we can't even move in here. Why not? They don't want you here. They put all those posters to tell you they don't want you here. You can't stay where you're not wanted. Oh, I know. That's why I'm moving. Oh, look at this, Jim. It's a palace. There's gardens and everything. Robbie would have loved a place like this. We should have had another baby after Robbie died. Why did we never have another baby? Because we stopped sleeping together. Grandma, good morning. I'm making breakfast. You don't even eat breakfast. You drink only. Today, I'm making breakfast. Sit. You make breakfast only when there's bad news for you from school. Grandma, I promise you, there's no bad news for me for school. Then what, Eddie? I don't know you like this. That's because I'm happy. I know it's a new experience, but we're just going to have to get used to it. Because next week, I am going to have lunch with Paula Kinghorn. Of course! You are in love. Oh, Eddie, this is wonderful news. Oh, Grandma, I'm just going to lunch. Oh, dinner is better tomorrow, man. <laughs> Grandma. I go to Lithuania next week, but still it's time to get special license. I won't please. Grandma, she is senior producer at Radio Scotland. And you are hot shot salesman. You have nothing to be ashamed. Grandma, it's a business meeting, no a date. You going to sell a window? Grandma, she might be offering me a job at Radio Scotland. You stupid boy! You stupid, stupid boy! How? Oh, you have job! But not the job I want. God didn't he put you on earth to have the job you want. He put you on earth to suffer. Aye, oh, and I've suffered. But you see this? This is a smile. And you see that? That is a wee sparkle in my eye. And I shaved first thing this morning. I am the shirt. And I haven't had a drink since yesterday afternoon. And you're happy? Aye! And you're not in love? No! Then you are a fool! You boys wait here. I'll see if I can get her to come down. Is that good? Where's Francine? I'm not sure. Isabel, is Francine back from casualty yet? What? What's happened? Don't worry, she's all right. She got a hold of a bit of broken glass. Oh, Jesus. She's all right. It's secluded. Where is she? Come see her right now. I just wanted to see her. I know. Let's have a coffee, Eddie. It's only a superficial wound. We think she found a shard from a lemonade bottle that was broken last week. Physically, she's fine. And? Otherwise? You're close to Francine, aren't you? Pretty close. Well, for what it's worth, my advice would be don't get any closer. She's a very disturbed woman, Eddie. Look, she was just fine before that business with the kittens. How did they have to come in like that and just take them? 
The kittens were sick, Eddie. They died three days later. Would she have taken it that much better if she'd found them dead in a locker one morning? This is a file, Eddie. It tells a very sad story of ten years of admissions, sections, self-harm. No one denies that she has lucid periods during which she can be quite charming. That's what we all work for. But they're temporary. I just thought I ought to let you know what you're letting yourself in for. Does it look like I'm doing? Look, the work service didn't hear is just fine. It doesn't need checked by you or by anybody else. Look, I don't know what you're talking about, pal. This is my radio station! This is a room in a hospital. And I'm trying to do a job of work here, so bugger off! Eddie? Bastards! Who do you want? Bastards! Who's he? I'm not having this. I'm not having it! I've got to talk to you. Eddie, I'm in the meeting. There's an electrician working in the station just now. That's the second one you sent, and I'm not having it. Fergus had a master's degree in electronics. Has your guy got a master's degree in electronics? He had a master's degree in electronics, and now he's dead. I'm sorry. Would you excuse us? Of course. Now, first of all, Eddie, the workman you have in today is not an electrician. He is a carpenter. And neither of them have been in to check up in Ferguson. Then what are they doing in there? They shouldn't have the keys. Eddie, we need another treatment room in Ward 11. This has been clear for some time. And several locations on the ward have been considered. Including the radio station? Yes. And it was decided at yesterday's board meeting that this would be the most appropriate site. I was going to tell you this afternoon. And we're finished. No. I think most of those present felt that a new site should be found for the station. As soon as funding allows. Well, I feel dead reassured now. Eddie, in case you hadn't noticed, there is a cash crisis in the health service. And when they cut back, you think they cut back on heart transplants and body scanners? They cut back on mental health because no one really gives a damn. Now, Dr. Winter is still very much committed to the station, and I will help you all I can. But it is very difficult to feel sorry for someone who so patently has brought all this upon himself. How long have we got? About a week. Oh, you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll. <laughs> so, what do you think? I'm speechless. I have had a complete makeover. Sylvia in the flat next to mine used to be a beautician. I'm living in a posh neighborhood now, so I thought I should make the effort. Well, you're not worried about chemicals in there. Sylvie is an obsessive compulsive as well. <laughs> if it's all right with her, then it's all right with me. She is a genius, so she is. Hope you got the trolley. A shopping. I've just been to the wee shop down the road and take her home with me the night. Have they not got shops in your new neighbourhood? Oh, aye. And then would it not make sense to do your shopping in the local shops? Aye. But they won't serve me. What? They won't serve anybody from Hillcrest. Not the paper shop. Not the late night shop, but even the local GP's a bit frosty on account of him being chairman of the residence committee for getting our planning permission reviewed. You can't stand for that, Rosalie. You've got to tell them. You're not going to take any more of this crapola. Aye. That's what I told the man in the paper shop. But he told me to bugger off. He swore at me, Campbell, which I think was uncalled for. You're going to ask him to move you, then? Move me? You're joking. I've got a bath and 
toilet in the same wee room, and a washing machine on the premises, and a microwave. Do you know what a microwave is, Campbell? You put your dinner in, and then microwaves make the wee molecules jiggle up and down. It's a bit like ECT. Eddie! What do you think? Jim said I looked like a film star. No one that had been in the Betty Ford clinic once too often, but a film star! You look very nice. What's up with him? They're closing us down. How? They're turning this place into a treatment room. That's how the workmen were in here. They are there. We've got a week to pack up and be out of here. You mean I'll not be station manager anymore? No. What are you talking about? We're not going to lie down and play dead over this, are we? We've built something here, Eddie. When I go round the wards collecting requests, I'm a celebrity. And you know how? Because we give folks a voice, and now the hospital is telling us to shut up. Well, what can we do? We can declare UDI. We can turn ourselves into an independent charity like most hospital radio stations in the country. Demand a site and then run the station the way we want to. The only thing stopping us is lack of dosh. It's also the only thing stopping me paying my milk bill. So we stage a fundraiser like we did before. Uh, I've got it. A radio phone. You mean like a telephone without any pictures? Aye, we'll broadcast from 10 in the morning till 10 at night every day till we raise the dosh. We'll contact mental health charities, we'll enlist celebrity DJs, we'll ensure we get coverage in every newspaper in Glasgow. Campbell, if my name appears in the papers again, I'm out of a job. Who cares? You're going to go to lunch with Paul on Monday, you'll have another job. We don't know that, Campbell. She said she was going to have good news. Have some faith, Eddie. This is our moment. And how do we need to save the station? The station isn't just you and me, Eddie. I can't give him a camel. Aye. Well. You with me, Rosalie? Aye, I'm with you. Then we'll do it ourselves, Eddie. And I'll talk to Francine as well. my age with breasts that sit up like hungry dogs, put in stockings. <laughs> Grandma, you can't do this. You can't just get on a bus to Lithuania carrying 3,000 pounds of hard currency. It's too dangerous. In 1946, I travel in cattle truck from displaced persons camp with nothing but stones in my pocket. What could be more dangerous? <laughs> Grandma, this is crazy. Uh, you stop that or I put you in soup and eat you. Uh, I tell you what is crazy, Eddie. It's crazy for grown men to keep useless animals. In Lithuania, animals are to work or to eat. <laughs> oh, come along. We go to bus station. What's wrong? I don't know. Just didn't think you'd really go. I tell you, many times. Hmm? But you must find a wife or you will be lonely. Ask crazy one to be wife. I thought you did the approve. To have you, Lassie needs to be crazy. And get rid of cats. If God meant us to live with animals, he'd give us four feet. <laughs>
Time is 2.45 on day three, hour number 29 of the St Jude's Hospital Radiothon. In 15 minutes, we're going to have another two hours of patients' party pieces, including Hector, who will be doing a selection of his best juggling tricks. Oh, well, I should certainly be worth listening to. I'll be back again at five, so keep sending me your requests and dedications, but most of all, send us your dosh and rescue our radio. So you should be. I put... What happened to you? Jim came round and we had a disagreement, but it's all sorted out now. Jim hit you? No. Some wee boys came over the fence and one of them started making faces at me through the window. So I went out and we disagreed about whether he was on my property and then about whether I was a loony who should be locked up. And then he threw the stone. And we disagreed about whether I was going to let Jim throttle him or not. The kid threw a stone at you? Aye. But I'm from Donegal. When a stone hits your head, it's the stone that's in trouble. Hello. I wanted to volunteer to do a party piece. Aye, what do you want to do? I want to play my ukulele. That's a fiddle. It is. But you're welcome to play it tomorrow at quarter past six, is that okay? Aye, quarter past six. Don't forget your fiddle. But what? Your ukulele. How's it been going anyway? Desperate. It's been like that all day. Loads of volunteers to sing the Postman Pat theme in 11 different languages. But where's our celebrity DJs? Where's our star interviews? Where's the bloody press? But the contributions have been pouring in. They've been slipping them under the door and a whole load have just arrived in with the post. How much have we got so far? 97 pounds and 27 pence. I may have to do something drastic soon. A real restaurant, eh? No styrofoam boxes. No a clown in sight. I'm glad you like it. You even get cutlery. <laughs> I haven't seen a fish knife since my second cousin married the Buffer Station. They had a sit-down wedding dinner for over 100 guests, which included me, age nine, dressed in the suit I made my Holy Communion in, which was by then about uh, two inches too short and sleeved in the trousers. They serve fish with a fish knife. I'd never seen a fish knife before. Never even seen a fish that didn't come out of a newspaper before. I was incredibly nervous. Are you nervous now? Uh, no. Aye. <laughs> we bet. But Campbell says it'll be OK. If his lunch is good news, coffee is bad. You're not thinking of ordering coffee, are you? <laughs> Eddie, we've all had a good listen to the show that you and Campbell did the other day. I was shy, I know, but we were nervous. We could do a lot better. It was fine, Eddie. But as I said, we'd have to wait for a slot. And now... There is a slot, yeah, I understand. No, there is a slot coming up as it happens. David Thompson is leaving to take a job in London. And in considering a replacement, we thought you and Carol were the obvious contenders. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, you said it. Say it again. You and Campbell were the obvious contenders. <laughs> I have been waiting all my life for this moment. No matter what happens to me now, my life has taken me to this moment. Eddie, I haven't finished what I was going to say. Ah, there's a but. Uh, you are going to order coffee. Eddie, I made a very strong case against this view. But looking at the whole of the week's programming, it was felt that it would be better if the gold show remained a solo slot. Oh, and no, no. You're not going to do this. You just want to get rid of Campbell because he's my dresser. That's not it, Eddie. You just don't want to have a loony on your staff. But I, no, no, no. If you want me, you're going to have to take Campbell as well. It's Campbell we want, Eddie. if I make some coffee? Aye, it's through there. It's no milk, though. Hello. 
Bradia thought it's dying in its feet. Surprise, surprise. Builders are supposed to be coming in at two o'clock tomorrow. And if we're not over there by then, they're going to throw us out. So we've decided to occupy the station. Campbell, have you finally really lost your mind? Who's going to occupy it? Me and Rosalie. And you, I hope. No chance. Eddie, I've thought it all out. It's the only way to save the station. I've told all the newspapers they're all going to be there. We are going to turn this into a front page incident. Campbell, I told you, I don't want to make a front page. What I want to do is keep my job. Eddie, you built that station from nothing. How can you let that slip away without a fight? Because I've got bills to pay. Electricity bill, gas bill, phone bill, which my dear grandmother managed to run into three figures before going off to Lithuania with every spare penny I had to gear. And because, although I have lost more jobs in my life than you have had manic episodes, Campbell, I could make a lot of money now. I could get respect for the first time in my life. Do you think I'm going to give that all up for the dubious honour of going down with my ship? Hey, did you not see that job's killing you? No, Campbell. My dreams. My dreams are killing me. So, what did Paula say then? She said there's a slot coming up and they want you to take it. You mean they want us to take it? No, they see it as a solo slot. No, I'm not going to take it. Campbell, take it. We'll keep at it, they contact some other stations, do another demo. Campbell, do you want to end up like me? Take the job for yourself. For Fergus, eh? I promised Paul I'd make you take it. I don't want to break my word. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go to work. This is Campbell Bain, and it's D-Day for the St Jude's Hospital Radiothon. That's D for Desperation Day, because we are still £2,856.53 short of our target. So this is it, Lurice. If you've got a rich uncle, then today's the day to remind him of that filing clerk he once took to Blackpool, the name of the cheap hotel where they stayed, and the type of barnyard animal that was involved. We are here for you, Lurice. We're not going anywhere. But I'm afraid I'm authorised to offer you the discount of the day, and the day only. Who's that? Well, a special promotion we've been running in your area ends night at midnight. I think you should go down to the radio station. The draft's from it completely out of order. Mummy boys get asthma. You can put three bars of that fire on and it makes no difference. Most of it just goes straight out the window. With twin view windows fitted, your flat will be 50% more energy efficient. But well, I have got some work to do. I'll just sit here and do it while you have a wee think. My man's a builder. It was his idea to buy this place and fix it up, or it never get done. A case of the shoemaker's kids having these shoes. No, a case of the shoemaker shagging his secretary. The loonies may not have taken over the asylum, but they've seized control of the radio station. This is Campbell Bain reporting live from the hospital radio occupation, where we have locked ourselves into the station and have refused to stop broadcasting until our future is assured. So talk to your friends, your relatives, your voices. Hospital radio must survive! disappeared last summer, took everything, including my wee boy's piggy bank, which I thought was a bit out of order. Money's tight, see? Well, the twin of you, easy finance plan means you can stretch out your payments over five years. Aye, OK. It has to be done. <sighs> it's 
There's no hurry. I'll come back there. But the discount? No, I'm sure I can get permission to offer it to you tomorrow or whenever. But I've decided now. Never paint weather beaters no good for you, hen. I'll spoil the look of the architecture. Well, what about the Moderna? Even worse, disaster. Look, I want to sign. I want this sorted before the weather gets any colder. <laughs> Your man's a builder. Is there any putty about the place? I don't know. Probably. Your glass is just loose. I'll fix it for you. Stuart, what are all these patients doing in the corridor? Get them out of here. Why are they still broadcasting? Can you not cut their electricity? Look, this is NHS property, and I'm going to have to ask you and your friends to leave here immediately. Francine, you're back. I was going to visit you last week, but you was somewhere else. We're going to lose our station, Francine. The builders are sitting outside right now, ready to tear it apart. I didn't want to be here, but here I am. I don't know what's going to happen, Francine, except that by tomorrow I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a station. And I'm not going to have you. I just wish I could talk to you again. you. They've called the police.
Thanks for bailing me out. No trouble. Oh dear. That unspeakable act has been committed on my front step. I hope that was a dog. Rosalie, let's just go home, eh? I want you to come home. I can't. No strings. We'll just try again. If I go, they win. You don't really think Robbie died because of the lettuce, do you? No. No. Me neither. Arrested, but not charged, were Rosalie Geraghty, a former patient at St Jude's, and Edward McKenna, a sales representative for Twin View Windows, who said that fundraising to launch a new station would continue. McAteer brought this to me this morning. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? No such thing as bad publicity, sir. Of course there's such a thing as bad publicity. I told you to give up that station, and you said you gave it up. You lied to me, McKenna. I'm a salesman. You're no salesman. I knew from the moment you walked in, you'd, you'd never make the grade. You're sacked, McKenna, do you hear me? Aye. Now get out of here. When do you want me to come and collect the commission I'm still owed? What commission? District Council tender. McKenna, if memory serves, I made the contact, I got the plans, and I negotiated the tender. What exactly did you contribute to that deal? That was my tape measure. As ye reap, so shall ye sow, Eddie. Do you know who said that? No. Then guess. I don't have to guess. I don't work for you anymore. I'm really sorry, Eddie. Thank you. Get the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more. to me, would you believe? From an anonymous listener in Bishop Briggs who writes, I know what you are. You should be locked up and have your balls cut off. So go boppers right into next week's mailbag and let me know what you think. Do you want me to be locked up or just have my balls cut off? Or do you want me to be locked up and have my balls cut off? This is Campbell Bean's Gold Show, so don't touch that dial. Just let it be. I don't think McTavish is ever coming back. No. I hope she's all right. She's probably in somebody's kitchen just now, boofing down half a tin of whiskers. There used to be this ginger cat who hung about the school when I was wee. I called him Pogo, on account of him being able to jump straight up in the air if you held a bit of string above his head. 
One day when I was walking home, Poco was crossing the street and a car hit him. The car kept going and Poco kept running. I ran after him until he fell down in the grass. He was still breathing. I ran home and told Ma we had to help him. She said whoever he belongs to will help him. I said, but what if he doesn't belong to anybody? And she said, then he'll just have to help himself. I went back and sat with Pogo till he died. Ma came out looking for me and found me greeting my wee heart out over this dead cat. She said, what are you greeting for? I said, because Pogo's gone to heaven. And she said, don't be daft. Animals don't have souls. and walls where the windows used to be. Then we'll build another one. How? Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to ask Campbell. And you'll be a DJ. And Rosalie will get a house. I'll dance on the stage at Covent Garden. I'm an alcoholic for this. I know. You can get better. It's going to take us time. 